everybody, thanks for watching. Now, when you ask a lot of Christians, why are they Christian? They will tell you a lot of things that have to do with, you know, loving Jesus and believing in the Bible and how they were raised and things of that nature. But nobody really gets into the heart of why they are a Christian. Nobody tells the truth is what I'm trying to say, because I know a lot of people who are Christians and I'm more inclined to believe that when I ask them, why are you a Christian, that their response is a lot. I don't honestly believe that they believe what they are telling me because their actions and what they do in life shows otherwise. And that's one of the things I want to present in this video. The truth is that it's hope and fear that really causes people to say they are Christian. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you don't know me. You don't know my life. You don't know why I love God and you don't know how I feel about Jesus and the Bible and this and that. I know a lot of people are going to say that, but it's a series of questions. There's a series of things that we can point out to figure out the truth. Now, when we start asking these questions, when we start analyzing a person's life and the things that they do, we can see clearly that if they are lying about their response or if they truly believe in the Bible and actually follow it. Now, these questions and these things that we can point out are just simple things that the Bible tell us to look for. So understand in this video, when I'm talking about the Bible, I'm only mentioning it because this is what people use. People read the Bible, and if you are a true Christian, then you are supposed to abide by the laws. You're supposed to abide by the rules in the Bible. So when I speak on the Bible, when I bring up these things about the Bible, I'm not saying so because they are true. I'm saying these things because this is the book that you use. This is what people are supposed to follow. So if you are a Christian and you are not following this book, but you are saying you are a Christian, then what does that tell us? It tells us that you are a fraud, you are a liar, and you are only saying and pretending to be a Christian. Now, also, we have to take into account that some people are just, you know, mentally unstable. Some people are just crazy. Now, as kids, we grow up being told so many things. And we get told about the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus and we grow out of these things as we get older. We no longer believe in Santa Claus. We don't believe in the two fair. We don't go trick or treating anymore. But for some reason, we held on to this Jesus in this Bible. Now, that a lot of that has to do with our parents and us going to church every Sunday. But when you step back and look at why we left Santa Claus alone and why we left the Easter Bunny alone and everything, it's because what? Our parents came out later or we learned later through school or whoever, our friends, that these things are not real. I mean, and we found out that they are not real because what? They just sounded impossible. It was kind of weird. You know, this dude coming or this fairy coming in, leaving money under your pillow. This fat guy coming down your chimney when you live in the hood and you ain't got a chimney. So all these things was like common sense stuff to us that no way Santa Claus is real. No way there's a true fairy. Now we grew out of these things and it was just common knowledge as we got older. But we are also told and we also grow up hearing that a 500 year old man named Noah built an ark and put two of every animal on it. That Moses parted the Red Sea. That a man named Samson ripped the lion in half with his bare hands. That Jesus walked on water, turned water into wine. All these things we are told and we just sit back and we accept it and say, yes, that happened. That is real. A fat man cannot come down our chimney and leave us presents, even though we got presents on Christmas. But Jesus is real. And if we pray to him whenever we want, if we repent, our sins will be forgiven. And we can pray and we can ask God for whatever we want. Ask and you shall receive. But we're told these things and we just accept it. So, of course, today, if we ran into a grown person who still believes in the tooth fairy, who still believes that Santa Claus is real, then we would, of course, question that person's mental state. But we don't question the mental state of a person, of a grown man or woman who believes that Noah put two of every animal on an ark and that Moses parted the Red Sea and Jesus walked on water. We don't question these people's mental state because of the state of the religion, even though 
None of these things have been proven, but we don't look at these people as crazy because of the way that Christianity is perpetuated and the way that it is pushed out on the people in movies and the Bible itself and people going to church and just the overall pressure of being in a Christian society where if you don't believe in Jesus or you believe in something separate from the Bible, you will be scrutinized. You will be looked at as different and weird, especially by Christians. Now, I think that as we go along in this video, people are going to ask the question, is something wrong with the mental state of religious people? And some people are going to ask themselves, is something wrong with my own mental state? Because Nobody has addressed these questions to you. Nobody has put these things to you the way I'm going to show you in this video. So I'm not saying that everybody is crazy or every Bible believer or Christian, you know, has something wrong with their mental state. I'm not saying that because I know a lot of Christians who are highly intelligent and who are very smart. But this is where, you know, lack of research, this is where fear and hope comes into play when, you, when we're talking about religion. Because religion, Christianity, relies on fear and it relies on you needing hope. It relies on it. So if you are in poverty, if you are trying to come out of a deficit, then you need hope. When everything looks bleak in this world and when you don't have anywhere to turn and you are fighting and you are struggling every single day to make ends meet, to pay bills, to put food on the table, you don't want to go a second without hope. You need it. You need it to continue. And the Bible gives you that hope. It gives people the hope that something will happen, that God will bless them, that he will somehow shed some light on their situation and bring them out of poverty. Now, when it comes to fear and Christianity, you have two things that people worry about. You got some people who worry about Satan. People worry about demons and being possessed and things of that nature. Then you got people who fear life. They fear poverty. You got people who fear just waking up and, you know, getting dressed and going outside and being shot or being robbed. You got people who fear losing their job. People who fear, you know, something bad happening to them. Now, of course, everybody has those kinds of fears. That's just life and that's just how it is. But when you don't know that if I walk down this street or that street, am I going to get hit by a bus or killed by a straight bullet? Am I going to be robbed if I go down that block? It's the unknown that we feel that we fear. We don't really know. So to have this presence, to believe that you have this God somewhere protecting you and guiding you and helping you is something that people need to continue to go on. That is fear. That is fear. They need this God. They need this presence. They need to believe that this presence of God will help them when they walk down this block they are unsure of. When they go into this neighborhood they are unsure of. When they go to work, when they're getting ready to pay bills, they want this presence to be in their life that they feel is going to help them and protect them from the unknown, from life. And that's the truth. And that's one of the things that people don't want to really address and admit when it comes to Christianity is that, I don't really believe in this book so much. I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to take any chances that I could be wrong. I want to be safe. You know, I want to play safe. It's better safe than sorry that I believe in this book. So when we ask people that question, you know, why are you a Christian? Why do you believe in the Bible? They don't give us that reply. They don't say, well, I'm a Christian because, you know, I don't want to be possessed by demons or I believe in Satan or, you know, I don't want to be in poverty. I don't want to lose my job. You know, I became a Christian because I want some kind of protection when I walk out the door, when I walk down the street because I live in a bad neighborhood. They don't tell us that. They say, well, you know, I grew up in church and I believe the Bible is correct. And, you know, I had a personal experience with God. I get that one a lot. I get a lot of people say, well, I talk to Jesus and I talk to angels and I, people just make up all kinds of stories to validate why they believe in the Bible. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, how you know, just because they don't say that, that they don't believe or how you know what they saw or how you know they ain't really see angels or how you know they ain't really feeling the Holy Spirit and that they actually really believe in God. Well, this is why we ask these questions. This is why I'm going to point these things out. This is why we're going to go into the Bible, and the Bible is going to tell us 
if these people are real Christians and if these people really are following the Bible and believing in the Holy Spirit because their actions speak louder than their words. So now this is where we really start to question a person's mental state. This is where we start to ask questions and point out certain things because if a person is a true Christian, your whole goal as a Christian is to what? Is to get into heaven, to not go to hell, to be a true Christian showing your faith to God. This is your purpose. You are not supposed to be in the world and doing what the world does. This is your purpose. Your purpose is to die and get into heaven, period, period. So if you are trying to escape Satan because you believe in him, if you are trying to avoid demons because you believe in them, if you are trying to not fall into poverty and to be successful, the Bible is clear that asking you will receive, but the Bible is also clear on what you must do and what you must not do in order for you to receive these so-called blessings and avoid these so-called curses. The Bible is clear on it, but you can't find me one person who is abiding by it. So it's like, if you really are a Christian and you really are saying that, you know, I'm a Christian because of this and that, then how come you are not following the book and trying to get these things that you say you are praying to God for, that you say you want from God? Now, let's take a look at a couple Bible verses because it's going to help me prove my point even further. So let's take a look at uh, 1 John 2.15. Uh, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now let's go to James 4.4. 4. It says, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, it can't get no more clearer than that. If you are in this world, if you love this world, which every single one of you watching this video does, you love the world because you are here. You use the world every day. You're online. You're on the world wide web. You are doing things within this world, things that you should not be doing. Now, my question is this. If you love Jesus Christ, if your whole purpose of being a Christian is for you to get into heaven because you honestly believe in hell and the hellfire, you honestly believe in Jesus, why would you do anything to risk you going to hell? Why would you do anything to risk you losing your soul to Lucifer? So these are the questions. These are the things I was saying that if we point these things out, if we ask these questions, we can get the truth from people. Because as I said, I'm more inclined to believe that people are lying. Now, another reason why I'm more inclined to believe that people are simply lying is because of, as I said, actions speak louder than words. And when we go back and read 1 John 2, 16 and 17, where it's talking about what the Bible means by, you know, loving the world, it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So now, the Bible also talks about pride of life. What is pride of life? The Bible talks about pride of sin. So having pride of sin. Pride of life, lust, lust of the eyes. All these things the Bible is saying is loving the world. And if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. It's telling you clearly you can't possibly love God if you love these things. So when I say these people are lying, when you look at Facebook and you see one minute a person will post a Bible verse. And then the next minute they'll post a video of twerking, of themselves twerking or some kind of music video that's showing lust, that's showing sin, and they'll promote it. That's pride of sin, that's pride of life. 
That's lust. So next minute, these people are turning around and say, well, I'm a Christian. I love God. And if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. They'll turn around and look you dead in your face and say, I go to church every Sunday and I love God. And then next minute, they praying on their knees, hoping something change or, you know, praying when something goes wrong, but they don't even follow the Bible. So this is what I mean by something is wrong with a person's mental state when you saying clearly, you crying and people go to church and they jump up and down and they saying they love the Lord, but then they don't follow none of his rules for anything to change in their life. So, of course, everybody knows I don't agree with the Bible. I've already proven it wrong. But if you honestly believe in this book, if you honestly believe in the Bible, you believe in going in hell, there's no way you would risk going to hell. There's no way you would risk your hopes and your dreams by going online and jumping in these chat rooms and posting these kinds of videos and going to these clubs and sinning continuously. So one minute, you got people, they go to church, they get all dressed up, they go to church, they sit there, they have the Holy Ghost. You know, they say they feel the Holy Spirit, they feel the presence of God, and they believe in God. But then they leave church, they go home, they sit down, turn on the TV, and start watching music videos. Start watching movies that promote Satan, that promote sex, lust that promotes sin. And then, soon as something bad happens, they get down on their knees and say, God, save me. God, help me out. Please, God. And then soon as something good happened, they say, well, thank you, Jesus. Jesus gave it to me. It was all God, all glory to God. God gave me this because I was a good Christian. I was doing good. I was abiding by God's law. That's why I got this job. That's why this good thing happened. But when something bad happened, they don't want to bring up the fact that they was watching those music videos. They was in that club. They was promoting sin. Never attribute the bad things to the bad things they do in life. It's only the good things that they attribute to God. This is the signs of something wrong with a person's mental state. This is why I say that. And I mean no disrespect when I say that. But it is. Because you can't go on YouTube, you can't go on Facebook, you can't go on Instagram and start promoting and defending these rap stars who talk about sin, who promote lust. You can't go to the club on Saturday, then church on Sunday, then during the weekday, sin continuously. On Facebook, promoting sin, watching these music videos, spreading all these videos through Facebook and through the internet. Then go to the church on Sunday and sit there and give your money to the preacher and pray to God to bring you out of poverty. What is wrong with that? What is, what is wrong with people and their mental state to do these things? Because this is what they do. It's that guilt. People all week sending, feeling guilty. Go to the church on Sunday with all this guilt and say, take my money. Please take this guilt away. Why do people do that? What is it that makes a person do these things. So this is why people who do not believe in the Bible, this is why non-Christians call Christians hypocrites. This is why we call them frauds because they get all up in your face and they say you're going to hell and they damn you to hell and say you are wrong and you are this and that, you are evil, possessed by Satan or you working for Satan. Yet they themselves never follow the Bible. They don't believe in the book seriously. They only pretend that they do. This is the truth that nobody wants to admit. This is the elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. How can you sit there and say you're a Christian and you this and that and then damn other people to hell when you are sinning continuously, when the love of the Father is not in you? So one minute you're on Facebook, everything's all good. Next minute you're posting sinful things. But then if somebody posts something that goes against Christianity, Guess who's the first person to say something about it? The guilty party. It's always the guilty one because they know deep down inside they need to validate themselves. They need to validate that they are a true Christian somehow by defending God, defending the Bible. What is it that makes people do these things? What is it that causes a person to do something like this? Now, most people are doing, so, are doing this because it's, it's more so on the better safe than sorry. Time after time after time, I've heard this excuse from Christians, so-called Christians, that, well, you got nothing to lose believing in the Bible, or you got nothing to lose believing in God. Well, if in the end, I'm right and you're wrong, 
then you gonna burn. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Safe than sorry. See, the whole thing is not about true faith or true believing in the book. It's about better safe than sorry. So I better act like I really believe in this guy because I don't want to get struck down. So I better pretend that I really believe in this guy. I better say the right things or else I might not get that raise or else I might lose my job or else I might not get no money. I might go broke or else God will punish me. But if you're playing on the whole notion of better safe than sorry, guess what? Remember, you say that you worship a God who is all knowing. God knows all. God sees all. So again, don't you think he know you bullshitting that you're playing better safe than sorry? This is the problem with these people. This is the mental state that religion has gotten people into to where they're playing games with their own selves. And of course, there are going to be those who choose to remain in denial. They're not going to accept what I've said so far in this video. They're going to say that, well, you don't know me. You don't know my life. You don't know why I believe in Jesus. You can't tell me this is why I believe in the Bible. People are going to choose to remain in denial because of hope, because they hope by defending Jesus and by defending the Bible that Jesus will reward them, that Jesus is watching and he will help them out in some way possible for defending the Bible and defending him. People really believe that. This is why they do what they do. Now, other people will go right to the Bible and say, well, what are you talking about? We can sin all we want. Just sin and repent and God is going to forgive us. So it's not wrong for us to be in the world. Even though the Bible says, if you love the world, if you are in the world, the love of the Father is not in you. You are enemies with God if you are in the world. But if you can just repent and ask God for forgiveness, then what is the whole purpose of butchering people and sending people to hell for being in the world if they can be in the world and just ask for forgiveness? Now, a lot of Christians like to say that we can sin as much as we want. No matter how many times we sin, as long as we ask Jesus for forgiveness, we will be forgiven every single time. So no matter how much we sin, as long as we keep on repenting, we'll be forgiven. But the Bible says, Hebrews 10.26 says, For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Now, James 4.17 says, So whosoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So, I mean, if you know it's wrong and you do it anyway, it's sin. Now, the whole thing that busts up this whole logic of keep repenting, keep repenting, keep repenting, is you don't know when you are going to die. The logic in this is stupid. So you can sin, walk out the door and get hit by a bus before you repent, and that's it. You go to hell, according to your book. No one knows when they're going to die. So how can you just keep on repenting? If you forget to repent, that's game. So what is this whole thing about? It's about fear. It's about hope. I've seen people get seriously emotional when I talk to them about the Bible and Jesus. They break down crying. Or some people say, I love Jesus so much. But it's not that they love Jesus or they love God. It's the hope that God represents. It's the hope that Jesus represents because their actions show clearly they don't love Jesus. By definition of Christianity, the love of the Father is not truly in them. By definition, by their own actions. So what is it that they love? They love the hope, period, which is why they can relate to these rap artists. They can relate to these rich people because they represent success. They represent the hope that they are trying to achieve. So when you see Jay-Z with all that money, when you see Nicki Minaj and Beyonce looking the way you want to look and having the success that you want to have, you can relate to that. You can relate to it, which is why you follow them. You can't find God anywhere on this planet. You can't find him nowhere. He's not talking to you. He's not saying anything to you. But yet you want this non-existing thing to change your life, to give you something. Now, who else can give you what you want in your life? Who else can fulfill that hope that you wish for? Rich people. 
because your hope really lies with money. I mean, if you're not sick, then money will basically take care of all your problems. So when you see these rich and famous people, this is why you confide in them. This is why you, you know, you fight for them. And you take up for them. You defend Jay-Z. You defend Beyonce because they can give you your hope. They can make your hopes and dreams come true. They can give you the money. They have it. They can make your dreams come true. It's about money. I can't find any Christian who would turn down a hundred billion dollars. If somebody came to a Christian and said, hey, here's a check for a hundred billion dollars. Do you think they would say no? They wouldn't turn it down. Yet the Bible says it will be hard for you to get into heaven if you are rich. So if it's all about heaven, why do so many Christians seek to be rich? Why do they want so much fame? Why do they want so much fortune if it's all about going to heaven? It's about the money. It's about the success. It's not about God. They want a better life. So when you see people like Denzel Washington and Tyrese and all these actors and everybody who go on stage and they thank God for their success, for being rich, do you think they read the Bible where it says it's going to be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for them to get into heaven? Do you think they fathom that? So even though it's going to be hard for you to get into heaven by you being rich, most rich people will say, well, hey, this is a blessing from God. God gave this to me and I'm going to use it to help people. I'm going to give to charities. Meanwhile, I'm still rich. I'm still supporting sin. So these people, these artists, these rappers, these musicians and movie stars who you thinking are getting blessed from God, guess what? They are promoting the very lustful things, sinful things that the Bible says for you not to do. They are loving the world and promoting the world to you, telling you that God gave me the power to do so and you believe it and you follow them. It's all bullshit, excuse my language. Wake up. The notion that the God of the Bible, the same God who is saying, do not love the world, and that if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The notion that this same God would give these people the success and fame and fortune that they have is crazy. When it says clearly not to promote lust, not to love sin, not to love life, not to be arrogant of it. And this is what this whole thing is about. It's about being, it's about arrogance. When you sit up here and you promote these videos, it's arrogance. It's arrogance. It's pride of life. It's proud. It's being proud of sin when you promote it. I'm proud of my sin. So what? I'm going to take up for this music artist. I'm going to take up for this person because I'm proud of what they're doing. So even if the, if the Bible was real, if it was correct, none of you will ever get into heaven because you can't follow it. It's impossible. Now watch how many people actually take up for the sin. I'm going to get comments that people are going to say, well, ain't nothing wrong with Facebook. Ain't nothing wrong with listening to hip-hop music. People are going to, to defend what their religion is calling sin. I'm not calling it sin. The Bible is. So I get so many people who say that, you know, by me putting out these videos and by me talking against the Bible, I'm taking away from people's hope. I'm trying to destroy their hope, and that's evil. I'm evil for doing this. So the whole thing is, if your hope is centered on a lie, it's centered on something that is not real, that is not true. And you hope to gain something from this doctrine. You hope to gain something that's actually physical, that actually exists, like a better life, like a new car or a new house. If this Bible is not real, then why would you put your hope into it? Why would you put your faith into it if it don't exist? You are better off putting your hope and putting your faith on something that is real, something that is practical, something that is actually going to happen and you by definition you exist you are real you are alive and breathing so whatever you want in life you can go out and get you don't need the false hope of a book to get you what you want in life go out and work for it go out and struggle for it work hard for it because look at the alternative by definition you cannot physically do the things that you need to do to get what the Bible is saying it will give you. So the hope that you are speaking of, this hope that you want, that you think this religion is going to give you, you can't even do the things you need to do to get it, to receive it. So if the Bible was real, these blessings and all these things that you're saying that you want, 
You can't even achieve it in life. You cannot be perfect. Matthew says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. It's impossible, and they know it's impossible. This whole thing is about guilt. They control you with your own guilt. There is no way you are going to be able to follow the Bible in your life. It's just not going to happen. So you get caught up in all these things that the Bible say it's sin. It's not sin, it's life. It's things that is here. It's things you cannot avoid. You feel the way you feel because that's the way you're supposed to feel. You can change your own life. Everything relies on you. You have control. You are in full control of your own life, period. There's no magical hand that's guiding you in every step of the way. So people honestly think that God is just going to come down or an uh, un uh, unseen hand is just going to grab them, control their body, and make them walk this certain path to success. You're not going to get there if you don't do it yourself. Action. Having faith is in action. The very definition of faith is in action. And for anything to occur in your life, we know it requires action. It requires you to get up and move. You can sit there in a room all day and pray for a new car. Unless you get up and get the money to get it, you won't get that new car. A new car is not going to fall out of the sky. We all know this. If you pray for a brand spanking new Bible, it's not going to appear. So that should tell you something right there. I should tell you that this God is non-existent. It's not real. They need you to be in poverty. They need you to have hope. They need you to have fear in order for you to stay under this religion. This is why so many churches are in the hood because people are in poverty. They need hope. People are poor. They need hope. And everywhere they turn, the government ain't helping them. You know, the world ain't helping them. They're on their own, so they need to feel like they are not on their own. They turn to religion. Churches on every corner in the hood because they know it's needed there. This is why they show all these scary movies and show you all the stuff about demons and devils and everything like that to scare your ass into going to church and staying in church. Never seen a demon in your life talking about demons, talking about being possessed. You saw, that sh you saw it in the movie. You saw it in the movie. This is where this whole thing is coming from. If you've never seen a scary movie before in your life, if we never had scary movies, people wouldn't be talking about these demons and possessions and things of that nature. Wouldn't be talking about it. This, all this stuff comes from them. They know what they're doing. They're messing with you. But your mind is like trying to break you out of it, and it won't allow your body to follow this doctrine. This is why you can't follow it. Because your subconscious reading this book, and it knows it's bull. It knows it's not true. So it's not allowing your body to follow it. When you get hungry, what you do, you get up and go eat, period. You're going to do so. You're going to go eat. That's what you do. So if this doctrine was true, your mind would make your body follow it. But there's no truth in it, which is why the religion requires faith. But faith is not truth. So bottom line, if you don't take anything else away from this video, understand this. You need to seriously do some research on the Bible. If you are a Christian, if you still choose to believe in this Bible, you need to seriously read the book. Seriously take notes and do an analysis and understand what the Bible requires of you in order for you to make it into heaven. In order for you to receive these blessings that you wish for. You need to understand what the book is saying and really do some critical thinking and ask yourself, is this possible? Will you be able to do these things? Now, I'm not saying that it's possible and it's just, you know, the, the love of sin is going to keep you away from it because you just love sin. No, I want you to seriously understand what it's saying and what the Bible is talking about you need to do. And ask yourself, is it possible? It's not possible. It's impossible. No one can be perfect. It's not possible for you to be so. Success can happen by hard work. Success can happen by no work at all. You can scratch a lottery ticket, game over. you rich, you set for the rest of your life. You know how many people that go to church play the lottery? <laughs> and they go in church and pray to God, Lord, let me hit that number. <laughs> no one in the Bible say that if you get rich, it's going to be hard for you to get into heaven. Remember that. So just really understand what you, what you say you believe in. So when I call Christians frauds, when I call them hypocrites, 
you know what I'm talking about. You know that you're going to go right back home and sin, and you're going to you're going to continue to sin. You're going to sin all day, every day, according to your Bible, the definition of sin. Not from me. It's just not mocha, but it's not me saying that this is what sin is. We know what sin is. We all know what it is. Let's stop pretending like listening to rappers say I'm going to shoot a nigga in the head. It's cool. It's right. How are you going to listen to that? How are you going to promote a girl shaking her ass? How are you going to promote videos of kids fighting and violence? How are you going to do all these things and then go to church on Sunday? And then defend the Bible and, and then say that you love God and you, you know, the love of the Father is in you. How are you going to do all these things and then say that when you know it's a lie? You need to get your rational mind back seriously because it's gone. Like, wake up. Get out of it. Now, I'm done with this because uh, I think people who are really real with themselves understand what I'm saying in this video. They know they can look in the mirror and say, damn, he right. I'm not following this Bible, and I know damn well I'm not following this Bible. But I just like to debate. I just like to defend God because maybe he'll reward me. Or maybe whatever that universal presence is that exists that we call God will do something good for me. Will help me out if I walk down the wrong block and somebody might try to rob me or kill me or kidnap me. This is what it is, but wake up and realize the truth. Everything that you're trying to run away from Everything that you're scared of, everybody is scared of. Everybody fears these things. It's something you got to deal with. It's life. You can't just hope that there's some invisible God out there who will protect you from life because then you're not really living. You're not being rational either. You can't do it. So I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in Jesus Christ and none of that stuff. Yet I'm successful. I grew up poor. I came from nothing. I lived in an abandoned home. My mom was on crack. Today she's fine. Today I'm successful. Gaining more success. Working towards my PhD. I came from nothing. Like seriously, you have no idea what I come I came from nothing. And some people have it worse than me. Some of you out there watching this video have it real bad. But where you have it bad at is financial. It's money. So money would change everything. If you had the money, it's like all the problems is over. It's gone. So that's not God. That's not faith. That's not hope. It's money. They put you in a situation in the system to where you would need it because it's the only way their Bible would work on you is if you are in poverty. So understand that. And um, thanks for watching. And yeah, it's like two videos that's in here. I actually did this video already, but when I started to edit it and watch it. I didn't like it. I think I was too mean. I came across too uh, condescending and too angry. So I wanted to take away the good parts of that video and put it with this one. So this is why, you know, it goes back and forth between the two videos. So that's why. But um, more videos to come. I want to thank everybody for watching and supporting. You know, like, comment, share. And thanks again.